the young urologist office usually do a, a session on, on Saturday. And they did a session on um, urology for dummies, which is making a complex, a complex topic simple. And in this session was uh, lectures about uh, infertility, about uh, management of uh, metabolic syndromes in stone disease, and also castration resistant prostate cancer. Regarding castration resistant prostate cancer, it's uh, four things that we have to keep in our mind when we have a patient with this disease. The first one is the initial workout. The, the initial workout, of course, is a diagnosis that will be made by progression. And progression can be defined with PSA and with imaging. So this is a patient that has a hormone-sensitive prostate cancer that we know since almost 100 years that prostate cancer is a tumor that depends on androgens. So it's a tumor that spread despite being castrated, and this spread can be known and can be found thanks to PSA rising and thanks to progression in imaging. This is the first one. The second thing that we have to have in our mind is what we should do when we have a castration-resistant prostate cancer patient. We need to do imaging tests, which are CT scan and bone scan. CT, CT scan and bone scan are the conventional imaging that we use in these patients. Of course, there are new molecular imaging, such as a coline or PET, PSMA, Probably PET-PSMA will have a role in the future with the new agents that we have, for example, lutetium. But by the time, and what is in the guidelines, is that this patient should undergo CT scan and bone scan. A part of this is very important to do germline mutations uh, uh, search in these patients. Germline mutations and somatic mutations. It's important because we are living a new era of targeted agents in castration-resistant prostate cancer. For example, BRCA mutations or P10 mutations. So it's important to uh, have in our mind that this patient has to undergo genomic testing. The third thing is to, of course, uh, give this patient a treatment. And uh, the treatment of castration-resistant prostate cancer has become very, I wouldn't say complex, but it's different from what we had 10 years ago. 10 years ago or 15 years ago was very easy because the only treatment that we had in metastatic hormone-sensitive prostate cancer was ADT. But now we don't have ADT only. What we know from metastatic hormone-sensitive prostate cancer is that ADT alone should not be the standard of care. So we will have ADT plus chemo, ADT plus ARTA, ADT plus chemo and ARTA, ADT per radiotherapy. So of course, this first line treatment will compromise what we will use in the castration resistance setting. So it's very important to know what was the first treatment of the patient in order to select the best drug because sequencing is very difficult in this setting. What is also important is the baseline characteristic of the patient the patient status, and of course, we have to take into account the patient preferences. So the drugs that we will have in, metast in, in metastatic castration resistant prostate cancer will be chemo, will be new hormone agents or second line hormonal agents, let's say, which are abiaterone and zalutamide. We will have also targeted agents, for example, PARPs inhibitors and P10 also drugs uh, that tackles these uh, these, uh, these genes uh, delection, let's say. We will have also lutetium, pembrolizumab, and radium. The thing is that nowadays we probably miss a tool that help us to select which is the best treatment for each patient. And in the future, what will uh, probably drive this treatment will be uh, the genomics, and what we call nowadays personalized medicine. After we have our patient under any treatment, the patient needs a follow-up, of course, and follow-up should be relied in PSA and imaging. Although you don't have a PSA rising, 
These patients need imaging, they need CT scan, and they need bone scan in follow-up periods that might be probably three months or six months. And why is this? Because you can have a, a progression in imaging without having a progression in PSA. Because castration-resistant prostate cancer usually have these molecular changes that makes the tumor grow without any PSA expression. So it's very important to be aware of uh, the follow-up that should be rigorous in these patients.